thanking the Lord so very much for all that he's done, all that he's doing, and all that he's going to do. My trust is in the Lord. I hope your trust is in the Lord as well. Because God, the Bible says, he, everything he does is good, is right, is excellent. And so we have to uh, align ourselves with him. Amen. Uh, Isaiah says, our ways are, uh, are, are different than the ways of God. As a matter of fact, he said his ways are far uh, from our ways uh, uh, as the heavens are from the earth. And so we know <laughs> that uh, God's ways are much different than ours. But we, we try. We, we try. That's what we do. We try to align ourselves with God and with the things that he'd have us to do. But God is a good God, and we know that. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. And so understanding what we know about his word and know about him, we know that everything that has happened is for our good. Amen? Amen. Yes. Okay. Let's let's get forward with our lesson this evening. We're going to do some backtracking because of our tech, technical difficulties on last week. All right. And we're in Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. Monday night is the study in the book of Revelation. The revelation of the uh, Apostle John. And it is the revelation of Jesus Christ. And we are learning a lot about uh, this book. Okay. But let us get started. And we will do it with prayer. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we pause just now to petition you uh, for your power. We petition you, Father, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that he will function on your behalf according to what you would have us to do this evening. We pray that what will be said, what will be done, will be pleasing in your sight, will be a blessing to your people. We do know what you told us in your word, Father. In this, um, in this book, you told us that we would just read it. That would be a blessing uh, for us. So I know that there is a double blessing when we are studying uh, from this book. So would you bless us accordingly this evening, everyone that's listening and tuned in right now, and those who shall listen uh, in the days ahead. Uh, we thank you, Father, for the new revelation that you've given us. Thank you, Father, for all that you mean to us this evening, and you do mean a lot. Bless us now in Jesus' name, we do humbly pray, amen. And thank God. All right. All right. All right. Good evening, TK. Good evening, Sister Poole. All right. I said that we're in Revelation chapter 6. And last week we had a lot of technical difficulties to the extent that I don't know what uh, uh, you guys got from the lesson last week because we went off and uh, we came on and we had to, we went off and we came back on. And it seems like nobody was hearing what we were saying. So we were just going to go back over uh, some of the first things that were said that we talked about in Revelation chapter 6. Okay? Remember Revelation 5 was a scene uh, in heaven after the church had gone, uh, had been raptured in Revelation chapter 4. All right? So here we are now. The scroll has been opened and some things are beginning to happen. Revelation 6, and we'll go through 1 through 8 uh, briefly. We'll try to go through that. And it was the opening of the seven seals, uh, riders on the horizon about to uh, take off, and uh, that's from verses 6 through 11. And then we have the sounding of the trumpet and the four horses, of the apocalypse, uh, which is uh, 
process of judgment, the apocalypse, which is a process of judgment. And that's what we're going to be looking at in the, these first eight verses. And that's what we tried to talk about last week. Uh, the first thing was, John said, I watched as the lamb opened the first of the seven seals. And then I heard one of the four living creatures say in a loud voice, like thunder, come. Verse two, and I looked, he says, and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow. Now this is understood to be uh, the Antichrist. He was given a crown and he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. All right. This 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 white horse is suspected to be the Antichrist. All right. Now, when the lamb opened the second seal, uh, John said, I heard the second living creature say, come. Then another horse came came out, and it was a fiery red horse. Its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make people kill each other. To, kill, to him was given a large sword. Now, you all ought to be picking up on some of the things that's being said in Revelation to let you know uh, uh, based on what's happening right now, that the word of God is true and that uh, we are moving hurriedly toward the close of this uh, universe. Uh, when we see the fulfillment of God's word taking place right before our eyes. Now it says its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make people kill each other. Now, have you seen as many people in your life, I mean, not in a war, but just individuals killing each other, kids killing each other, parents killing their children, children killing their parents. It's all going on right here before our eyes. But John said he saw it happening, okay? Uh, uh, he said he saw it happen when he was given the vision, okay, of what was to come to pass. He said he was, he was, to him was given a large sword. And when the lamb opened the third seal, okay, we've seen the white horse as a rider, the red horse rider. Then we, when the lamb opened the third seal, he said, I heard a living creature say, come. I looked, and there before me was a black horse, okay? Its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. In verse 6, he said, Then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying, Two pounds of wheat for a day's wages, and six pounds of barley for a day's wages, and do not damage the oil and the wine. Now, Listen, brothers and sisters, uh, I don't take too much of what uh, politicians say, but I do listen to them, and uh, I, I, you know, I take it all with a grain of salt. Now, it could be that we are moving fastly toward the famine that is talked about, alluded to here uh, with this uh, black horse. Now, I know what's happening in the economy. Uh, but I do know this, that prior to the COVID, you could buy, for example, a two before piece of lumber for $2. Now that same piece of lumber is $20, okay? Uh, people are, uh, uh, are looking for employees left and right. They can't find anybody to do the work. All of this is pointing toward something that's taking place in our economy. And it could be that it's fastly coming, that we're going to have a famine, 
okay? Or um, not just a famine, but uh, there's going to be a, what I think, can't think of the word I'm looking for, uh, but uh, it, it deals with the uh, deals with the economy. You can't buy, you can't sell, all of this kind of stuff. And even if you have money uh, to to buy it, uh, there you know the products are not there. For example, my wife went to uh, Heinen's uh, uh, this weekend, and she found out that uh, bacon is becoming <laughs> very extinct, so to speak. You can't find bacon. Already chicken wings, <laughs> one of my favorite, is uh, uh, hard to find or hard to get. All of this stuff is pointing to where we are going in our economy. All right? You need to pay attention to the word. You need to pay attention, particularly what's written here in Revelation, but you need to pay attention to what's going on in our economy. Now, uh, verse 7 says, when the lamb opened the fourth seal, he says, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, come. John says, I looked, and there before me was a pale horse. Its rider was named Death, and Hades was following close behind him. You know what Hades is. Yeah. And they were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill, to kill by sword, famine, and plague, and by the wild beast of the earth. Now, <clears throat> what we're seeing right now is a overview of the details of what's getting ready to uh, be revealed later on in, say, we're in the sixth chapter now. But in the seventh chapter, the eighth chapter, ninth chapter of Revelation, okay, we're going to see it uh, uh, broken down even in more detail about what's what's going to happen, and uh, you'll be able to see more clearly uh, how this is pointing to this day and time in which we are living, and how what's happening right now. John has already told us. Uh, that he saw in the vision about what was coming. So we're looking at the overview here in chapter 6, but in chapter 7, we're going to get, uh, uh, we're, getting, we're getting like the snapshot right now, but we're going to get to, I'm sorry, we're getting the big picture, but we're going to get the snapshots as we move forward uh, in Revelation. Then uh, verse 4, uh, uh, I'm sorry, there was the uh, horseman that uh, we've seen. Uh, okay, so uh, we have covered uh, these. Uh, did we get all the horses? I think we got the white one, we got the red one, uh, we got the black one, and we got the pale horse. Okay, now all those horses that was released, uh, we, we call the riders on the horizon, represent something, okay? Now, as we move from the horses, John said, I watched as the lamb opened the first of the seven seals, and uh, these seven seals, when, when he pulled open the seal in heaven, something happened on earth, okay? And, uh, 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 all, all of these things that were uh, was, that was being revealed uh, to John, John was trying to describe it, uh, <laughs> but John really didn't, you know, he had nothing to go by in terms of how he compared to what he seen because nothing like this had ever been seen uh, on heaven, on earth, but he was doing the best he could. Uh, to reveal, <laughs> okay, what was coming up. Verses 5 and 6 was about the seal of despair, okay? Verses, uh, uh, let me see, verses uh, 
uh, where was it now? Verse, it's, verse, verse 2 was the seal of deception. Verses uh, 3 and 4 is about the seal of destruction. And then we have uh, the verse of the, the 5 and 6, which will be the seal of despair. Okay, and that's what that black horse uh, was all about. Okay. Uh, and I think I gave that to you, uh, and I hope I gave you enough detail so that you would know and understand what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, that black represented mourning, sorrow, famine, according to Lam Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 8 and 9, okay? Uh, and, 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 and Lamentations talked about uh, what famine would look like and what God was going to do, Okay? Uh, with with the, with the, with the famine that will come to the land, verses seven and eight is about the seal of death. That was the pale horse, okay? And and death, he says, it was the rider uh, with hell following, and uh, he says there will be no no restraint. According to Second Thessalonians chapter two, be no restraint, okay? Uh, and and it will just uh, consume our earth, all right? And uh, there'll be much starvation, hunger, disease, pestilence in the land. Jesus talked about it to his disciples before uh, he left, all right? Uh, now, I, I think I mentioned this before, but maybe I should mention it again. Uh, this is after the church has been raptured and we have entered now into uh, the tribulation period, okay? Uh, the seven years of tribulation. The first three and a half years uh, are, are going to be some tough years, but the last three and a half years are going to be severe and we'll talk about that when we get to it. Okay, but now we've talked about these horses, okay, and uh, what these horses represent along with the seals that was uh, peeled back from the scroll. And when the Bible said he opened the ninth seal, John said, I saw on the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony that they had maintained. Verse 10 said, they called out in a loud voice, how long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the land and avenge our blood. Verse 11 says, then each of them were given a white robe and they were told to wait a little longer until the full number of their fellow servants, their brothers and sisters were killed just as they had been. Verse 12, I watched as they opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth made of goat hair. The moon, whole moon turned blood red. The stars uh, in the sky fell to the earth as figs dropped from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. The heavens receded like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. Then the kings of the earth, the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty, and everyone else, both slave and free, hid in caves and among the rocks of the mountains. They called to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of the of the wrath has come, and who shall who can stand uh, withstand it? Uh, now we see chapter six of verses nine through seventeen. We see uh, what one fellow re referred to as the greatest history's greatest prayer meeting. 
the first four seals, the events of these verses uh, during the uh, portion of the great trip, the port, the, the middle portion of the great tribulation, and known as uh, Jacob's trouble, and you can look at that in Jeremiah 30, chapter 7. Alas, for that last day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it as the fifth and the sixth seal are open. Terrible things take place on earth. Many are depressed by the events of Revelation. However, we consider what the world has done and continues to do to God and his son uh, here in this world. God has every right to judge, every right to judge mankind, and he will excuse uh, that right during tribulation. But uh, let's look into the word of the Lamb as he opens two seals. Verses 9 through 11. When he opened the fifth seal, he says, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony that uh, they had maintained on earth and avenged, uh, yes, our, uh, 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 the, the, the souls. They called out in a loud voice, How long, sovereign Lord? Lord, as verse 10, holy and true until the judge, until you judge the inhabitants, uh, uh, judge the inhabitants' blood. Uh, these are the martyrs. Martyrs are those who have been killed and who are being killed. Okay? And uh, this is here again after the rapture. Okay? Uh, and, and, and the world will hear the gospel currently. Uh, 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 and, uh, but uh, if they are saved during this time, they will instantly lose their lives. We'll talk about this a little later on, too. Uh, the cost of allegiance uh, will be their death, and that's when he opens the fifth seal. And when he says, I saw under heaven the altars of the souls of those who've been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they have maintained. Now, I'll talk more about that in chapter 7, but during the tribulation, there will be people who, who can be saved and who will be saved, but they will instantly lose their lives, okay? Because of the mark of the beast, because of the Antichrist, okay? Yeah, you can you can uh, uh, yet be saved, but you're die instantly. And so those that were in heaven, John saw, was talking about, God, when are you going to uh, uh, avenge, uh, avenge us and those who have lost their lives and those who, who uh, continue to lose life? And Jesus, and, 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 and in the vision, uh, God says to John, listen, it's going to happen but you got to wait just a little while longer because there are others who are going to be losing their lives, others who are going to be shedding their blood. And so God gives them uh, at the time that they are bemoaning the souls of those that are being killed instantly and blood are being shed. God gives them a white robe to put on as a means of consoling and comforting them, all right? And there's no comfort <laughs> like the comfort that God can give. Yes, so uh, many will be saved, once again, during tribulation, but they'll pay uh, with their own uh, life's blood, all right? Uh, we heard, remember what Timothy, Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 12 through 13, when he says, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now, do you think that evil men are waxing worse and worse? Um, is the evil in this world intensifying? Is men becoming more evil than ever before? Well, hey, 
John said he saw it revealed to him uh, that uh, men, uh, uh, evil men and seducers were waxing worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. There's another verse of scripture says that the love of many shall wax cold. All right. You know that's happening right now. Church folk that used to seemingly uh, love and care about the church and care about God's people uh, seemingly has turned cold. They have they have no no desire to to do the things of God, to work and to advance the kingdom of God. You know they're so focused on the things of this world and worldly things, acting like they're going to be here forever. You know. Uh, their, 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 their desire for the things of the kingdom has, has, has waned, has, 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 as the scriptures say, uh, waxed worse and worse. All right. Matthew chapter 10, verse 25 say, it is enough for the, the disciples that uh, he be as his master and the servants of his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, Okay, how much more shall they call them of his house? So, meaning that uh, it, it, the way they treated Jesus, all right, if you're standing for right and trying to stand for uh, uh, godliness, you, you're going to be treated the same way Jesus, Jesus was treated. Amen? Yes, yes, we and so we, we, we recognize this, all right? Bible says in John chapter 16, 1 through 4, he said, these things I've spoken to you that you shall, so you won't be offended. He said, they shall put uh, you out of the synagogue. Yeah, put you out of church. <laughs> Yay. And time will come that whosoever killeth you will think that they doeth God's service. Did you hear that? That's in the word, brothers and sisters. Jesus said that before he left, that the time will come when they will kill you and think that they do of God's service. And these things will they do unto you, he says, because they have not known me. They, know, they don't know the Father. But these things have I told you that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them and these things i said not unto you at the beginning because i was with you that what i'm trying to say in conjunction with what revelation is saying revelation is already uh consistent with what jesus told his disciples uh when he was here and so these things ought to be speaking to us while we are right here and right now listen we need God in our lives, every day of our lives. We need to stay focused on God. We need to keep our minds on God. We need to stay in the word because if you don't, Satan is going to target you, okay? And, and he's going to take your victory. He's going to take uh, that which you have, all right? If you don't continue to grow, in the things of God. Yes, he's, he, he, you're going to be his target and you, he's coming after you. He's coming after us. So we've got to stay focused on the things in this world that they'll actually kill you and think they're doing God a service. Lord have mercy. There's going to be a price to pay for those that are devoted to the Lord. Verse 10 talked about the cry of vengeance, back to chapter 6, said they called out in a loud voice, Lord, sovereign Lord, holy and true, until uh, how long before you judge the inhabitants, uh, the inhabitants' blood? Uh, they were concerned about what was going on, okay, with their brothers and sisters on earth. Amen. Yeah. We are challenged uh, in this dark and, and evil world to love our enemies, bless them that curse us, 
do good to them that hate us. Pray for them that despitefully use us and persecute us. He says, bless them which persecute, bless and curse not. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Psalms 94 uh, and 1 says, O Lord God, to whom vengeance belong. O God, to whom vengeance belong, show thyself. Lift up thyself, uh, thou judge of the earth, re and render a reward uh, to, to the proud. God will deal differently uh, during the tribulation, okay? Uh, yeah, that, things will be different during that time, all right? And uh, like I say, when those are being killed on earth because uh, they are standing up for the Lord. Remember, I'm talking during tribulation now, y'all. We'll be out of here. <laughs> Somebody ought to rejoice. <laughs> We'll be out of here. Hallelujah to his name. Uh, but he'll give us white robes, okay? Because we are so hurt because of what's happening to our brothers and sisters on earth. Okay? All right. Verses 12 and 17, 12 through 17, we see uh, men uh, begin to panic because of what's going on on the earth. This is a very frightening, this is a very awful scene of what's taking place. Verse 12 said, uh, chapter 6, verse 12 says, I watched as he opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth, made of goats out of the whole moon, turned blood red, sky, the stars in the sky fell to the earth, Field, as, as uh, figs dropped from Fig tree shaking with a strong wind. Heavens received like a scroll being rolled up. Every mountain and island was removed from its place. And then the kings of the earth, all right, the generals, the rich, the mighty, everyone, both slave and free, hid in caves among the mountains, called the mountains and the rocks to fall on them, okay, uh, and, and to hide us from the face of him, uh, uh, who sits on the throne. Okay, this has to do also with that uh, uh, the heading of the prayer, greatest prayer meeting that ever took place. <laughs> yeah, people going to start praying. Verse uh, 12 through 14, 14, when we see what they see, what do they see? Uh, John said, I watched and I, as he opened the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake. That's what he saw. The sun turned black like sackcloth, okay? Moon turned red like blood. Stars fell from the sky. Uh, 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 the heavens receded like a scroll being rolled up. Mountains and islands were moved out of their places, okay? And in other words, it is absolute chaos taking place on earth at this time. Haggai 2 and 7 says, and I will shake all nations, <laughs> all nations, not just America, all nations, and the desire of all nations will come, and I will fill this house of glory, said the Lord of hosts. Matthew 24 and 29 says, immediately after the tribulation of those days uh, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Okay, let me see, let me touch something here. Okay, all right. Moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Okay? Now, like I say, it's going to be chaos when the sun turns black. <laughs> All right? Uh, moon becomes like blood and the stars fall from their silver sockets. Okay? All of these natural, stable 
things that man has de depended upon. Pardon me for a second. Yeah, the man has, has, has understood to be stable and he is dependent on them to always be there, okay? Uh, but they are removed from their sight and, 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 and removed from their places in heaven. Heaven is actually rolled back. All that is above is rolled away. Curtain is drawn. The veil that separates us from the face of God will be will be removed. Mountains and islands moved. Okay, so that's what they saw. They saw these things taking place on Earth, right here. All right. And what do what do they say? Verses 15 and 16. When the kings of the earth and princes and generals and the rich, might and everyone else. Slave free, hidden caves uh, among the rocks. They called to the mountains and, and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of God. Now, uh, that, 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 that's their prayer. <laughs> now they're praying, but they're praying the wrong thing and they're praying the wrong time. All right? All men begin to pray at this time, and want, want to be buried under the rocks. Men who were too tough and too cool to pray, now they'll begin to pray, but but to the wrong, but in, at the wrong time. It's too late to pray now. Yet they uh, pray and in the wrong direction because they call the rocks and and and, and not the rock of, of God. <laughs> I mean, the the rock of Gibraltar. They don't call the rock of the salvation. They call for the physical rocks to fall on them. And many who would not turn before, they want to turn now. But it's too late, okay? Okay? Uh, what they see, okay? What they sense, okay? Uh, verse 16 says so they call to the mountains. The mountains fall on them. Fall in the high, uh, hide them from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of God. He said, for the, verse 17, for the great day of God's wrath has come and who can stand it? I remember my grandmother used to always sing this song a uh, long time ago. My grandmother used to say, God's getting us ready for that great day. Okay, and who shall be able to stand? Now, I think Grandma may not have understood the theology of what she was singing about, but she was singing the truth. Okay, God is getting us ready for that great day. All right, and uh, who will be able to stand that day? Uh, they, the, the song says, they'll be crying out to the rocks to fall on them. All written right, it's all right here in the book. I'm so glad God's getting us ready, but those who understand uh, the reality of God and who he is and what he's requesting of us, those of us who will accept Christ and, 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 and get ready to get out of here won't have to be dealing with all of this kind of stuff. I, our prayer has already been, Lord, have mercy on us. Okay, we're not waiting until this time. But here, here is what here is what's so sad. Here is what's so sad. Men and 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 and, and, and I'll just say men will be so wicked and evil and mean during this period of time that rather than to acknowledge God, they will. They will pray that they die. They pray that God kill them rather than to acknowledge who God is. Okay? And, and we see that right now. People would rather do anything than to acknowledge that Jesus is the Christ, 
the son of the living God. Uh, I was witnessing to somebody today trying to share Christ with them today and uh, asked them, I said, do you know Jesus? And they said, uh, yeah, I know something about him. I say, uh, do, uh, if you die today, where would you go? He said, I'd go where my mama is. <laughs> I mean, it just took me for a loop that that was his understanding about who Jesus is. He said he'd heard about him, okay? And I'm thinking, well, if you heard about him, you know that he's the savior of the world. But uh, that wasn't his understanding. He didn't have time to even want to talk to me about it. But that's, that's the overall picture that you get when you try to talk to people about Christ today, all right? Anything, they'll do anything then to acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God. Do anything. And right here in Revelation, this reveals to us the truth of what I'm saying because rather than to acknowledge God and re re acknowledge his sovereignty and his rulership, rather than to do that when all of these this chaos is taking place in this world, uh, they call not for the rock of Christ, but they call for the uh, physical rocks to fall on them and kill them rather than to, uh, you know, receive the rock of Jesus Christ in their life as Savior. And so we see that uh, here in this sixth chapter, uh, we are recognizing what's, what's taking place, what John is seeing, what is being revealed. Uh, and, and, and one last thought I want to share with you. Everything that happens in the physical world, okay, uh, is, is, is the result of of something that's happening in the spiritual world. In other words, uh, before something takes place physically, it takes place spiritually. And so, uh, I know I'm getting, kind of getting off the subject, but I'm not getting off the subject because uh, what we need to realize is that uh, when we talk about we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers. It is those things behind the scene that is controlling the things that we see. And so we need to be conscious of that. And John's revelation is, uh, is indicative of that fact because what he saw in the vision in heaven Every time something took place in heaven, something uh, unfolded on earth. Every time uh, uh, a, se a seal was broken on the scroll, a horse took off running. <laughs> yeah, every time something took place when, uh, when those seals were peeled back, in heaven, something happened on earth. Hey, that's why we have the Lord's Prayer that says, when we pray, uh, Lord, uh, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, okay? Because uh, if, 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 if the will of God uh, is done on earth as it is in heaven, then we can be assured that we are, we are fulfilling our purpose here on earth, and that is to reveal the kingdom of God here on this earth. That's, that's our task. That's our, that's our purpose, okay? Our purpose is to bring heaven to earth. That's what we're here for. We are the ambassadors of Jesus Christ. We are citizens of two world, world uh, citizens of heaven, citizens of this earth. But we're supposed to be revealing 
uh, pardon me, we're supposed to be revealing heaven here on earth. So those that are here on earth don't know God can know him through our behavior and through our actions because everything that happens in the physical is a result of something happening in the spiritual. So everything that we cannot see is a result of what's, what we what we cannot see results in something we can see here on this earth. We need to keep that in our minds as we go forth daily. Time is up. All right. And we would uh, make an appeal that someone would come to Christ Jesus, the Lamb of God, that's <laughs> opening that, that scroll. Because remember, they couldn't find nobody to open that scroll in heaven. Nobody but Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. I would invite somebody to come to him this evening while he's still dealing with men in a merciful way. Revelation 22 uh, 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 and, and 17. Uh, Revelation 22 and 17. Yeah, come to the Lord while you, uh, while the blood is run wrong and while the Lord will be merciful and save you because the time will come when uh, that uh, 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 period of mercy will be over. If anyone's there and want to acknowledge Christ as their Savior, okay, uh, you don't want to leave this world without Jesus. Lord have mercy. And if you if you want to acknowledge Him as Savior, uh, a document will come up on the screen right after I finish uh, with this little presentation. And if you'll follow the prompts of that doctrine. Thank you, Jesus. You can uh, uh, be saved because somebody will be on the other end who will tell you all about Christ and what you need to know. If you'd like to become a member of the New Sardis Church family, yes, uh, there'll be somebody who'll tell you how you can do that as well. All right. The doors of the church are open. <laughs>